What's up, Internet? Welcome back to my channel. This is Tae Woo. All right, so today I'm going to be starting a uh, tutorial series on value investing slash stock analysis with Python. Now, before I get started, just a little warning. So this tutorial series is called Value Investing with Python. All right, so it assumes two things. Number one, you understand what value investing is. Now, you don't have to be Warren Buffett or Benjamin Graham or any of those you know, value investor type guys to understand what I'm talking about. But um, if you do understand the basics of uh, you know, analyzing stocks, reading financial statements, like income statement, the financial, uh, sorry, income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement, things like that, um, it'll be good for you. Now, if you don't understand, it's okay, don't be discouraged because this stuff is really intuitive. You know, it's basically buying stocks on the cheap. Um, so a lot of it is just plus, minus, divide, subtract, and all the ratios are really simple. Uh, Wall Street wants you to think that this stuff is really complicated, but it's not. It's uh, really simple stuff, especially with Python. It'll make it extra, extra easy. Uh, number two, it, that it assumes that you understand Python programming. Now, if you don't understand Python, um, if you have like zero knowledge of programming, maybe this is not the best course because it will kind of, kind of get in, get in technical details of it. But if you do have basics of programming, like if you've done Excel, VB script, or if you've done other kinds of programming like Java, C++, it'll be really simple for you. So you do understand, you do need to understand both of them. Um, and if you don't, it's okay. You can still watch because a lot of it is really intuitive. The language is really elegant, stylish, um, and it's common sense stuff, right? I mean, you want to buy stocks when it's cheap, not when it's expensive, obviously. So um, just want you to know that. Uh, and let me kind of get tell you about why um, we're doing value investing with uh, Python. Well, value investing in its core is basically buying stocks when it's cheap, right? Uh, but problem with doing the security analysis, with, like, for example, with Excel, which is sort of the historically industrial standard kind of tool that people use in Wall Street, for example, um, it's really labor intensive. Suppose you're analyzing stocks for, I don't know, 20 companies, right? And so each one takes you like an hour, maybe, maybe or two. Maybe you're really good at it. Maybe, okay, even 20 minutes or something like that. But you're doing it for 20 stocks and you have to do this every quarter, right? Because companies come out with financial statements um, every, every three months, right? So you have to analyze this every time. But not only that, you're looking for other stocks, right? Because you're looking for other opportunities as well, which means you could literally be doing hundreds of stuff, hundreds of uh, security analysis every month. And that's, you know, it can probably take days of your life. So we want to be able to automate it. Now you can do it with Excel, but problem with Excel is it's, it's, a, it's a really grindy, you know, it's, you gotta take the, down, you gotta take the data, you gotta do all this processing, clean it up, make sure the, the columns match, make sure the dates match. It's a lot of work. Now with Python, it's literally just like download the file and just press a button and boom, it's done. Now I'm not saying that just because you did this, you're gonna find the next home run stock that's gonna make you a billionaire. No, but it will save you a lot of time. So that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this because my overarching theme of my YouTube channel is sort of having this competitive advantage, right? It's like how to automate the boring stuff. Like how do you do the stuff that matters? Um, how do you create this business moat, right? The Warren Buffett talks about this, this competitive moat around your business, you know, where, whether it be, you know, you sell candy on a corner street somewhere, or you're doing this value investing for like tons and tons of companies with billions of dollars, you want to have this competitive advantage and, you know, speed and execution is a, a huge, uh, competitive advantage, right? So, um, anyway, that's why I'm doing this tutorial series. And then anyway, let's get started. All right, let's get started. Um, so, before I start, I have a little meme here, and you know, there's this scene from uh, I think this is uh, the Justice League or something, where the Flash asks Batman, he's like, "Hey, what's your superpowers again?" He's like, "And I'm rich." And the reason why I tell you this is because, you know, it's kind of like a Batman. If you have the right tools, I feel like you know you can do sort of like really amazing things in life. Um, the world is obviously full of computers now, right? Like everything is digital. Everything is, every information is, you know, binary, right? It's not like paper anymore. So if you have that power to wield um, information, the digital information, I feel like, you know, you have sort of advantage in life. So anyway, I um, thought I'd put that little meme picture there. So here's what we need. Uh, number one is data. Obviously, without data, you can't do any um, security analysis if you don't have information to analyze. So traditionally... Uh, people have used things like um, Yahoo Finance. Uh, this is what Yahoo Finance looks like if you've never seen it before. But if you have done value investing, I'm assuming that you've seen this stuff before. Um, but Yahoo Finance, you were able to get data uh, programmatically before, but now they shut it down, so you can't get it. Um, so you know, people did 
Google Finance for a while. It's also similar to Yahoo Finance where they post information about companies, their quarterly earnings, um, their daily stock movement, you know, funds, you know, how they do it, how they're doing, you know, analyst stuff like return on equity, return on assets, return on investment capital, yada, yada. A lot of it was there, but also they blocked a lot of the services that, you know, were, well, they blocked basically people from accessing them. So there's not a lot of free sources left. And the one that I found that I like particularly is this company called Symfin. Um, let me show you what Symfin. So this, I believe the, I talked to the founder before. He, um, I think he's a European guy. Um, he started the site, basically he did a lot of the data cleansing for you. Um, so the only caveat is that this is only for US equities, I believe. No, no bond market, no Forex, no ETFs, no, you know, nothing else basically. It's just US equities, no international data. So if you are doing value investing with uh, US equities, this is probably going to be the best choice. Um, so let me show you what NVIDIA looks like. So NVIDIA, um, is basically a GPU um, hardware maker company. They make GPUs. Um, when when I talk to when I talk to you more later about machine learning, um, when I talk to you about GPUs and leveraging GPUs to train neural networks and things like that, um, this company is probably the the best one right now. I mean, their stock have like quadruple, quintupled in like last five years. Uh, so if you look look through, well, by the way, I don't work for Nvidia. I'm not trying to pop up their stock. I'm not trying to I'm not telling you to buy their stock, but I just want to show you uh, this format of Symfin is that they have a lot of this data stuff already analyzed for you, right? There's a key points uh, that, that you're looking for, you know, a lot of this price to X ratios, or like a lot of these ratios and um, a lot of this sort of formulas that are pre-calculated for you. And of course, you know, they do this nice formatting and all this pretty data cleansing stuff. I mean, that's one of the most painful things about it because in the past, what people have used is this thing called Edgar. I don't know if you guys know what this is. So let's look up. And this is the actual, the, the filings that are uh, filed by the company directly with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Uh, let me see, NVDA. Let me show you how it looks like. Well, it's ugly. It's really, really ugly. So let's look at their 10K, for example, right? Uh, let's look at the 10K. If you come down, I mean, you got to read through all this stuff, right? I mean, just to figure, to just get to the good stuff, which is, where is this? Selective financial data. I mean, it's here, but now you got to read through all this stuff and it's like, oh, what if you want to kind of screen out the numbers first before you start reading all this stuff? I mean, that's, that's how you sort of save time, right? So, uh, Symfin did all that stuff for you, right? They basically make it nice and pretty. You don't have to do anything. You just... And they have a button that says download. Um, you can get a you know f uh, standardized financial statements, or you can actually get however it was reported by the company. Um, it's really nice. It's, uh, it's super super well done. Um, I use it all the time. Now, like I said, the only issue is, is it's U.S. equities only. No U.S. debt. No nothing. Like if you're looking for international stock, this is not going to be it for you. So I mean, if there is interest for um, doing international stuff, you know, put comments below um, and let me know, you know, which countries particular that you're looking at, you know, see if I can kind of uh, maybe do a side uh, tutorial on that. Anyway, um, of course, the second thing is a tool, right? The tool that we're going to be using to analyze these stocks. Um, so we're going to be using Python, obviously. So you're looking at this thing right now. This is, thing is called Jupyter Notebook. So Jupyter Notebook is basically uh, the tool that most data scientists use now. I mean, as you can see, if I scroll down, you can actually do Python code in the browser. Like traditionally, the way people have done Python code was like they would actually, you know, open up an IDE, it's a develop, development environment, and they'll write code, they'll save it, and then they'll run it in their browser or whatever. But, you know, that's really time consuming. But what if you just did everything in one shot, right? Like you put it in the browser and then you run it from the browser, right? Like for example, let me run this one. X equals one plus two. So what is X? Obviously three. I mean, that's what's great about it. Um, and also what you can do is you can comment, like for example, the first cell that you saw here, this was actually, if you double click on that, it shows you the source, the source code, so to speak. So, you, you know, this pound, uh, by the way, you have to convert this to markdown. This cell is code. You see how it's code. This cell up here is markdown. So when, it, when it's in the markdown mode, you can actually tell it, hey, this is the header. Um, please, you know, insert this 
image here. This is like similar to H2 in HTML, right? Like a subheader. And then I say like, put this here and then, you know, there's a link to it. Um, and then when you actually run this cell, right? We press Alt Enter and it basically does all this pretty formatting for you. And this is not a code obviously. So it's, it knows that this is not code, so it won't run it. Um, so you can actually install this yourself. Um, if you go to Jupyter Notebook, Jupyter Notebook, uh, you can try and install this yourself, but I don't recommend it this way because I'm sure you guys know Python has all these crazy sort of contingencies with pack, package versions and all that stuff. What I recommend is this thing called Anaconda. Anaconda is similar to Python pip. Um, it's, a, it's a package manager basically, but it's much, much better. I mean, it's super awesome. Um, the next episode, I'll talk about how to get it started with this and you know, how to set it up on your machine. But if you, um, if you can't wait, you know, I recommend this one. If you already have Python in your machine, um, you know, it might be a little trickier. Um, if you have a lot of experience, like installing packages and stuff like that, I guess it's okay. But if you don't have Python in your system, we're going to be starting with Anaconda. All right. So let me show you what Jupyter can do. So, um, for example, you can, like I said, you can add comment, right? So before the way coders did it was that they would actually write comment inline comments and you know they would like look at the comments and see what happened but imagine if you just go top to bottom and then you see these nice pretty things and you see code and you're like hey there was a comment here and i can read a comment and follow but follow that by with another code i mean it's a lot easier to go from top to bottom so uh, let me give you an example i'm gonna import these to uh, plotly is basically a graphing uh, module um, so I'm going to import those two libraries. I'm going to say, you know, X is one through 10. It's a list of one through 10. Y goes one through 10. I'm going to do a linear plot. I mean, it's literally one, two, three, three lines of code. And it generates this pretty thing. You can actually hover over. Um, you can do a lot of interesting stuff. You can do bar charts with line charts. You can do all kinds of stuff. And it has, comes with all these sort of cool, uh, sort of, uh, you know, graphing utilities that you don't have to do all this programming. It just kind of knows that you want it and it'll do it for you. Um, so anyway, so that's enough for today, I think. Um, it was just a tutorial on what we're gonna talk about, what we're gonna need, uh, and also um, what to look forward to. So in the, in, the for, in the future sections, I'm going to be relying heavily on comments. So if there's anything that you didn't get or if there's anything that you want me to cover, for example, like you're watching this and you might be wondering, I don't know Python. Well, there's a lot of uh, Python tutorials that, you know, there's like tons of them on the web. Uh, but the ones that are particularly uh, find useful for this type of, you know, finance oriented stuff is things that are oriented towards pandas and NumPy. And also, also of course, uh, you know, you might be wondering like, how do you do, what, what all these formulas mean, right? Like return on investment in capital, where is it? You know, what do these ratios mean? Price to earning ratio, price to sales ratio. What do these things mean? Well, I'm going to be covering it, but in the, in the future episodes, if there's something that you particularly don't understand and hasn't been addressed in my tutorials, please feel free to comment below. And, and if you see the comment and you, you do agree with that person, please upvote that comment. And I'll see if I can get to a, a separate tutorial series on that. All right, so anyway, I think that's it for today. It's getting pretty long. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please, please, please put it in the comments below. And if you like this video, please thumb up and make sure you subscribe and you press that little bell button to, to get notified when I do come up with the next subscription, next uh, video in the series. And I'm gonna be covering a lot of stuff um, that has particularly related to sort of getting the competitive advantage in life in terms of business, uh, finance, or whatever. So if you do like it, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.